our command Q on the, on the wrong window. Yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So replace globally, what, what am I doing here? Why doesn't this work? Um, replace. What is happening here? No, Oswald, I, I accidentally hit the command Q on the wrong window. Okay, let's see here. So if I press uh, R. Oops. Uh, here, place false. Shift R, replace true. So, okay, so the input is correct. Uh, okay. Oops. Replace color. want an else here, right? That's a good one. Damn it. That doesn't explain it all. should see a uh, replace on everything regardless so I think this offset stuff is uh, is wrong but shouldn't be this is a source oh, looks okay yeah so current asset is in uh, That's not in pixels. So that's a problem. We need that in pixels. You see characters. So we replaced the uh, completely wrong bytes. This will work now. Let's just replace the sign. There we go. That's good. So we'll try on this one to replace all the webs with purple. Like so. We can undo it and redo it. Great. We have a new tool in our arsenal for the quest for the perfect pixel. Yeah, well, if you watched the stream like three days ago, you know this is not clean code. Or at least it wasn't. It was embarrassing, to be honest. But then I am... Um, I had this stream where I refactored everything just to be able to do these quick hacks. So it's, it's of course a bit of a theater, to be honest. I mean, a tool like like this is really it's really simple to implement. It's 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 not hard. Just do it. And um, yeah, so 
it's super limited it's super special so adding something is super easy because I don't have to consider anything and now we got the monkey island tune that was kind of unexpected wasn't it this was unexpected while I like the monk, while I really love the Monkey Island tune, I'm not sure about this version. It's Glenn's version from 2013. Well, during my next project, when I port this game to C64, I could use the tunes already. That's perfect. We need to switch artists. Don't you know a Java stack, or do or do you always rely on uh, IntelliSense? I mean, the Java Swing classes I know by heart, so it's I don't need IntelliSense for that. No problems. But for work code, if I do stuff in Android and stuff like that, I would need uh, IntelliSense also to be productive. Uh, but not for homebrew project like this. I think that the sound engine in Porto Monkey Island was, uh, will be the, the least of the problems. This is, uh, where did I put that project? I have shown some of you guys it, but uh, let's see here. Not sure where, where I put it. Um, my scam vm implementation scam vm version 5 is implemented in java what you see in the console here is uh, is, is the scam my scam engine executing stuff so yeah here it is running my gallon one and i i did this engine because i really wanted to um, like understand the aspects of the game can't I enter a scam bar uh, as you see there are problems with this game now I just lost the window there it is yes, there are tons of problems here but uh, it actually runs So 
also implemented this. Uh, uh, it was a quick hack, to be honest, but it's. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pre study for upcoming ports. Java classes here, but all in all, it's eight and a half thousand lines of Java. It's not that much, to, to be honest. It's the Scum engine is very simple to implement. It's, it's to be honest, not that hard. Very hard for C64, of course, and I've, I haven't s still understood every aspect and. I still haven't had a grasp of uh, of the game state yet. How hard will it be to implement the game state? Or keep the game state, sorry for that. So here are all the backgrounds extracted. Yeah, so this is everything in the game. You see, they, they use this quite simple Z buffering, which has to be translated to C64 too. Like, so all zoom steps for a character would have to be in sprites, pre rendered in ROM, and then you have to have these images where you have special code that masks sprites against these uh, Z buffer sheets, and so on. So, it's, yeah, it's a it, it's a mess to implement, of course, but uh, might be doable. I don't know. I had to do the pre-study. I also did another pre-study, which is called Zelda. So I really wanted to know exactly how uh, NES worked, so I wrote this emulator. So this is also written in Java, with JavaFX and perfect frame sync, so it's all super smooth. Yeah, this this is portable, definitely. So I started to digest the code in game and so on. And uh, yeah, I have a fairly good idea on how this could be uh, transformed to C64. Yeah, it's it's a nice game, but it's um, yeah. I think Mega Man 2 is the best one. I love this game. Just the music. I don't remember the code here. Yeah, I can imagine you did. I, I wanted to bring up that tune actually. Let me find that one. I 
prioritize uh, frame rate before uh, audio latency. So that's why you get this uh, bad, bad sounds. This is the best tune in the whole game. Not this tune, but when entering the final level. You have that one as well in your collection, right, Andreas? Yes, that's one. And a fun level to boot. It's really hard. Completely lags. Sounds like shit now. System too slow. That's just crap. Natsuma engine. Nope. Never researched that one. What's that? What is that? Harvest Moon, Rune Factory, River King. Nope. Never tried it. Be right back. Just have to take it. at least.
Yeah, sorry. So I was just mentioning that I should. Uh, I'm considering uh, at least doing research on the, um, the the Sierra engines, like implement Space Quest One and Two or King's Quest Three or something like that. Also, a game I grew up with and I'm really fond of. So um, yeah, it would be kind of nice to to. Uh, have those ported to C64 as well. Yeah. One and two, at least. But I have no idea how those engines work, so... Might be... Not be doable. Or it already exists on C64? What? Are you freaking kidding with me? Hmm. Are you referring to this one? <laughs> <laughs> one screener with JSL graphics. Huh. Yeah, that would be cool. I think, I mean, King's Quest 3 should be doable. Gamers. And also the, the graphics are already in uh, wide pixels, which is uh, which is kind of fortunate. Yeah, exactly. There are Apple II versions you could uh, steal the 6502 code on. But I mean, this looks like crap. It should it, this should be portable to C64, but it it, it looks like shit. The graphics should be hand painted by a professional artist, but uh, the story is really nice. I just love the story in this one. This could definitely be ported and improved. I just hated the police quest game as a kid because they were just too hard, you know. And with most Sierra games you, you just had this death thing going on all the time. That's impressive, finishing, I mean without hints. That's impressive. Impressive stuff. So Mickey, what do you make out of this uh, tile set? It's just a one big messy blur to me, but yeah, I don't know. Might be possible to do something nice with it. No, I. I 
to stop trying to make the doors gloomier. I made the decision that probably the professional graphics artists like uh, Two Flower Hair should fix that. It's over my. beyond my skills. So is this tile set to be honest. Just so much random blurriness here everywhere. Just to fix this, yes? So Andreas, how's your pixeling going on with your secret game? All good? Do you have agonists like this? That's a long story, but uh, I reverse engineer the full game and ported it. So I used this um, Ida Pro disassembler and took the DOS binary. And then I ported um, every function call. It was like 250k lines of uh, disassembly. I ported that, every line, every function, everything, uh, to Java. Let me show you that. So, this is a... 
This is a Java port of the game. So this is a pixel process replica. The whole game. Everything included. So once I had that up and running, I had created my own source, so to speak. I could start plan the port to D64. So this is my own implementation of the game in Java, based on the DOS disassembly in X86 assembly. This was like half a year of work to get this up and running. <coughs> then I could start to plan the port. If that answers your question. Yep, correct. Later years, many years later, the Scum VM guys did their own port of the game based on their own disassembly. So I cross-check with the, those sources that are in, they are in C now. So I, I cross-reference with those sources just to make sure I got everything right. And I, I had some fuck-ups and they had some fuck-ups. So together we could like uh, find all the differences and uh, implement the correct engine. There were some uh, special cases where they failed and I had some special cases where I failed. Yeah, it was roughly 250k lines, yes. And the C code was uh, the scum VM code. I use that as a base now because I unfortunately lost my comment at the disassembly. So I don't have that anymore, so I can't look at that. I can look at my Java sources, but the C64 code nowadays is more accurate than the Java code. So the only reference I have nowadays is, uh, is the C code in Scanvia. Unfortunately. It was due to, due to corporate theft where they stole my old laptop, so I lost, I lost uh, that code and I had it. Forgot to ha have it in Git. But that's okay, oh, thank you. It's not that incredible. It's just a lot of work, to be honest. A lot of work. Yay! I declashed this wall set and it doesn't look like complete crap. We're so happy. Now let's just mirror this. Because that's what they did in the original graphics. Come on, stupid cut and paste. There we go. Hello. Why doesn't the mirroring work now? wrong with the mirror code, I think. There shouldn't be color clashes when I just mirror it. Something went wrong here. <laughs> I'm sure to write some post-mortem. Just 
please paste this code now and flip it already. There. Stamp. Done. Thanks. Just adjust this a bit. That went bad. Okay, I need another approach. But I'll do that later. Took half a year approximately. During train rides from until work, so like half a year work business days. Like one and a half hour each day for half a year or so. No, something like that. It took a while, yes, indeed. It's always slower in the start, then once you have the basic structures up and running, the rest kind of just falls into place. Uh, what that uh, music request also on? Do you want uh, to listen to That's the way it is? I love that tune personally. No, it just disassembled to us. They use this interactive disassembler where you try to find data structures, you assign the structs and say okay this chunk of data is a struct of monsters and uh, the struct is defined like this and that. And then every, every reference will like get monster.strength automatically and so on. So the more you work with the source, the, the easier it gets because 
more and more it gets like documented. Either Pro Disassemble or Hand does that as well. <sighs> I started recording on such uh, Disassemble for the C64. Actually, I did some web based stuff, or I can't even remember this code. I haven't touched it for ages. Oops. Probably doesn't run anymore. No. The browsers nowadays are so picky, I can't read the source anymore. That was the IDA Pro disassembler. It's a commercial disassembler. It's, it's very good, but it, it's a steep. It's a steep learning curve, very steep. But once you know it, it's super fantastic. Looks like this. You just have to brush off your x86 skills. If I manage to disassemble the whole library ball game, I think you can do it as well. If you just spend half a year with it. Just you have to be resilient, you know. I haven't tried none of the free alternatives, I don't know even where to what what kind of tools are there. That's a compliment, you know. Thing with, with disassembling that much, what 
was like it really felt like coding after a while so when I really into the, the source it felt and when I disassembled function by function it, it was like super fast just felt like uh, like myself coding to be honest That's nice that there are three good alternatives nowadays. Because while either Pro Disassembly was good, it was still really bad and bad UI UX. There are a lot of quirks. See, doesn't start too good with an error directly. C cache not found. Never heard of that too. Seems to build, at least. So then why would you ever want to do that? <laughs> what was the use case for that? It's, 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 Kind of hilarious. I don't get it. Yeah, okay, fine. Curiosity is a good thing, so that's a reason enough for me. I thought you had some like greater goal with it. Turbo assembler is that hard to understand. Should be quite limited. Katara. It was on the same site here, Katara. Official UI, okay, okay. So this is not a, it doesn't have a UI. Okay. Front and back end, so modern. Nice. 
nice, nice, nice. Oh, it wants to try pseudo. So let's just install both. Does support 6502 here? Yeah. Let's see. Let's just see. With 600 megabytes for a disassembler, it better support 6502. Damn it. Where did it go? Oh, where is the installation? Here it is. Okay, so it there. Computer runs to a crawl now when, when this compiles. Okay, now it's okay. So where did the program go? I started it. I lost it. There it is. Okay, I can choose dark theme. That's good. Let's do that. Open file. Okay. Shall we try the cellar ROM? Format NES, 8 bit, that's good. Architecture 6502. It starts good. Uh -huh. Disassemble. Okay. I need a scroll bar, but there are none. Okay. I can emulate. So where is the code? Okay. Stuff. Right. It's very small. So it would be nice to see. Um, yeah, there we have the sound registers. So let's see the the jump interrupts between um, between uh, banks. There should be bank switch code uh, in the interrupt handler, like an FFF. Yeah, it will take a while to learn it, but I'm sure it's good. Let's see here. Here we have the IRQ vectors. Which is 
completely bogus. It disassembles a vector. Okay. How do I jump? So how do I change this to a 16-bit value instead of a disassembly? This is typically stuff you do in either pro disassembly. I know this is a vector. Yeah, but this is not code. This should be a vector. So I want to... I want to tell... Tell the disassembler that this is, should be a word, not code. Mark it as data. Exactly. What word is data? Well, how do you do that? How do you do that? Set current bits to uh, set set as set as here it is set as data data word. There we go. There we go. Now jump to that address. Maybe double click. No. Yeah. Okay. So now we're now we're getting somewhere. So we should start here. Set as word. Right, so now we have the stuff here. How do I jump? Copy address. That's good. Show in disassembly. No. Hmm. Copy address. Jump to address. Yeah, with tools like this, you always have to work with them for a while, and then you then you start to learn them. So yeah, there's a search bar there, right? So when I copy this BFF zero, I get FFFE. Okay. Copy address, paste, and it doesn't work. Oh, this is not the interrupt handler. Definitely not. And also, it's. I'm not sure if this is assembly is bank aware. It doesn't look like that. Might not work for Ness, so 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 good. The reset vector BF fifty. Yeah, this is this is this is good. This looks like typical startup code, so this is good. And this is definitely the wrong start, but yeah, well, yeah, Glenn, I had that idea as well. I actually did a transpiler between x86 and 68k. I started to do that, and uh, that did just that, but well. Yeah, exactly. It's not bank aware. I know I've used my own disassembler. I disassembled exactly this code, and I know the interrupt vector jumps to a uh, to a trampoline that is available on in all banks. So, yeah, let's not delve into this anymore. But it's yeah, nice. Thanks for uh, mentioning it. I will definitely use it next time I decompile anything. Definitely. But now we have a tile set to the clash, you know. Yeah, same here. 
Still, I'm very familiar with other Pro Disassembler, so it, it will be a steep learning curve to learn something new. But why not? Why not? <laughs> it's okay. It's very fun to disassemble games and you don't really, we've talked about this before me and uh, Andreas, you, do, you don't really have to do a full disassembly like I did in uh, with Eye of the Beholder. You just need to get the gist of the game, you know. I can't really see Andreas if if it if it was bank aware or not, but if it's not bank aware I I wouldn't say it can handle those cards. I mean it's really essential that it's bank aware. Whatever Commodore Vice emulator binaries are. Any clue? Save states? Probably save states. So yeah, exactly snapshots. Guys, I'm not that intimidated by this wall set anymore. It's um, it's okay. It is okay. Still, I'm quite unsure if I do any better than uh, than my auto converter. I don't think so.
<laughs> Are you also disassembling Oglet? Disassembling can be very, very rewarding. Just disassemble. The worst thing that can happen is that you actually learn, learn something new. That's not entirely a bad thing, right? So nice with Friday tomorrow. How cell can do he, he keeps it simple indeed. His code is always to the point and don't try to complicate things indeed. I agree with you as well. Right, I really want to see this uh, in action. Or just stop working sprints. You don't need that. So Mick, are you still awake? Are you pixeling? How's it going? Deep learning could bring some shit into auto be clashing graphics. Just imagine how have all the reference images. Then you do an auto convert and then you let the mirror off, fix it, and use that as a learning base. Wonders could be done. Why can't the monsters just stop attacking me? Oh, he's killing me. Warping down half the game with my startup characters. That's that can only fail.
two minutes papers on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I think I've seen some of that. Okay. And also the VSF format has changed uh, during the years, so is it VSF for for Vice 3.x or what? That format changes with every Vice version. No, exactly. It's just a binary dump of internal uh, internal structures. So I wouldn't trust it at all. continue to pixel until I die. Let's not do that. I need some sleep as well. So take care guys. Good night.